See, I knew I could judge appearances. It's that beer belly. Oh, Tim, I've been waiting for you. That is a ghoul! The name's Pikachu. And I'm what you might call a great detective. I doubt it, dog. My partner Harry and I ran into some trouble on a case. It's the recap. Wait, Harry what? suddenly disappeared, and I'd lost all my memories. After that, I was wandering the city when I ran into Tim. While we were searching for Harry, we uncovered a series of crimes involving R, a chemical that drove Pokemon berserk. Tim and I managed to solve the case and save Rhyme City. And yet... Harry was still missing. Now then, due to the R incident of two years ago, some of our citizens began to doubt Rhyme City's motto, coexistence with Pokémon. So to those of you who were affected, I offer you my deepest sympathies. Howard Myers. What's that? Freaking Corviknight? That Corviknight? <laughs> Slices through the sky in metal wings. It's coming this way! <laughs> Sir, follow me! Okay, so this takes place two years Everyone, after the first. Get inside, right away. <laughs> what the heck is going on? <laughs> That's true. That's Are pretty funny. <laughs> don't think so. Its behavior is different. It's not R? It's all right. Just calm down. Come on, man. You can use moves. The sucker's useless. Pikachu. Ugh, lousy Corviknight. It just made off with my signature hat. <laughs> he looks so amazing. He has no eyebrows. What's up, y'all? And welcome to Detective Pikachu Returns. I will summarize the first game in the next, like, few minutes. But this is pretty smooth looking. But yeah, so this takes place two years after the first game. Before I go on, y'all, make sure y'all shank that like button and watch me solve this case in style. Oh, Tim, over here. It's because I'm a Pikachu that I noticed. Damn. Whoa. Hey, yo, this got better quality graphics than BD Speed. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, not. So yeah, Look, there must, must be a motive. This must be the notebook the mayor dropped. Oh, there's something inside. It's a picture it's a of the girl. Family photo? That's his daughter? This girl looks familiar. No, oh, she's the one who didn't look too happy during the mayor's speech. Okay, so maybe she summoned the Corviknight. That's my classmate, Rachel. Huh? Whoa, whoa, time out. You know her? Why am I just now learning this? Because I don't tell you everything, Dad. Okay, so, you know, we got to talk about two, two, a few things. <laughs> hey, shut up. I'm talking. Um, what do we do? Who beat up the Pidove? Is that Pidove unconscious? Don't touch it. Moving this Pokemon could injure it. Hey, you big guy. What happened to Pidove? He can't understand you. Well, I'm at a loss. Nothing we've tried so far is working. Hey, can you hear me? You, you know he can. You cut your Pika Pika chatter in a vacuum area. Will Butler? Chief of the Pokemon Protection Bureau. What is it, like the like the FBI for Pokemon? Oh, Dino can hear how how healthy you are. I need to track down Corviknight and get this area evacuated, but I can't just leave Pidove here. Hey, what happened? Calm down, fam. To everyone else, you're just saying Pika. Chief, no civilian injuries to report at this time. Copy that. Great work. It is the girl. She made sure not to injure the people, and there's no R that was in the Corviknight's eyes. Now, I really should get back to leading the evacuation, but I can't leave Pidove here unconscious. You ought to clear out of here too, young detective. Mr. Butler, let us help you take care of Pidove. We'll find a way to wake it up. Oh, goodness. Okay, I'll summarize the game in a second, guys. Let's just deal with this case first. Hey, Pidove, can I talk to you? <laughs> yes? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it says their friend's taking a nap and won't wake up. So it thinks that unconscious Pidove is just sleeping. Cool, cool. You really do love the smell of- Wait, huh? What's that got to do with anything? Cuckoo. Nice strong aroma makes the sleepy times go away. Okay, so if we find something that smells, we can wake the Pidove up. So yeah, this takes place two years after the first game. And essentially, the, the plot of the first game is our dad went missing two years before the start of the game because he was researching something called R, which is actually people who, like, weaponize Mewtwo's genes. For the sake of, like, making it a miracle drug. 
to like heal anything but because it was Mewtwo's genes and not Mew's genes it became this like corrupted medicine that made Pokemon go crazy. So the whole first game was using Harry's leftover clues before he went missing to arrest this evil mastermind in the city. So now that's done but Harry's still missing and now we can see it's been two years no. which is interesting. I have a feeling this won't go the same way as the movie. I'll explain that in a sec. Okay, Zatu. No. Zatu can see the great future. I don't know how this is gonna help. I don't know how this Pokemon can casually exist. Okay, this Zatu won't talk to us. Zatu is a Zen Pokemon. Ooh, look at you. Okay. Oh, you smell. You can wake it up. It, it's been so many years and it still looks like a fake Pokemon, Aromatisse. <laughs> Excellent work, young detective. That perk put up right up. Yes, I'm Will Butler, chief of the PB PPD. The PPB? <laughs> We're an organization dedicated to protecting the Pokemon of Rhyme City. We were informed two years ago as a response to the infamous R incident. The case you two solved. Mayor Myers was so shaken by what occurred, he took it upon himself to create the PPB as a countermeasure. He wanted to make sure crimes involving Pokemon like the R incident would never happen again. That's why this organization exists. Isn't keeping the peace the police job though? In the past few years, Rhyme City has seen a concerning rise in the number of reported incidents and accidents. The police can't keep up, but now the police can protect the human population while the PPB protects the Pokemon. It's the Pokemon police. I hear something. It's back again. <laughs> Come on, let's chase it down. Sir. Sir. That, that's, that's chasing? Oh, I can freaking crawl faster. It's Corvinette again. Hey, give me back my hat, would you? All right, let's find it. Zatu, can you tell me the future? It's telling us not to panic. Yo, that Zatu does know the future. <laughs> I wonder if it knows the end of the game. Hey, this is where we drink coffee and all. But yeah, I guess, is that a Sinistee? I guess that pretty, it, uh, wait, there's a Sinistee right here. This is freaking weird. Oh. Whoa, Pikachu, look. Okay, never mind. It was a freaking Alolan. Well, how do you like these apples? They're scattered all over the place. What a mess. None of these are real freaking apples. Oh, no, wait. They all are. <laughs> Applin lives in an apple. Okay, Applin, what happened here? So the wooden crate shook. You got thrown out, and that's when you realized your friends were missing. So the Corviknight was hired here to cause chaos. Maybe that's his daughter, and she wants him to stop focusing on work? Focus on the family? That's, that's a weird motive. Okay, we need to get its apple friends, but this freaking Alolan executor's in the way. Whoa! This tree's an executor! Hey! You freaking fart. You think I can't do this? Hmm? Look, there's one apple. Where's the other one? I can't even see the other one. Maybe it's in this cr- hmm. It's like in this one. Hmm? What? Are you eating it, Pikachu? No, you're talking to... Wait, what are you doing? Oh, this is a tasty apple. I guess it's behind the crate. Hey, the freaking hat! So the Corvin I dropped it when it came by here. Okay, that's where the apple is. <sighs> this was a real pain. Huh? Hey, hey, get back here! The heck? <laughs> the quit heck? Playing around. Hey, I'm not playing at all! My hat keeps moving on its own! <laughs> That's ridiculous, Pikachu. You alright? Don't hurt yourself. Please, this'll be nothing. Finally got you back. <laughs> will resume shortly. We ask that all participants please return to the venue at this time. Uh, I guess we better hurry back. Do I know that voice? Wait, we're Don Corva Knight. Now let it off the hook just this once. We're reconvening? We're going back to the speech while that Corva Knight is loose? Great work. Thank you. I don't know you. He's the mayor. And you as well, Pikachu. I can't say it enough. Rhyme City owes you a debt of gratitude for your efforts. We strive for coexistence between people and Pokémon in our fair city. 
And you two are the ideal detective duo. On behalf of the city, I am pleased to present you with this medal. Whoa, brah. Thank you, Mayor Myers. I'm honored. I think this might be for what we did two years ago. Of course, ago. you get one too. I'm Pikachu. sure this isn't for the Upland case. <laughs> yeah, I'm the great detective. Is that gonna stay on his hat the Pika, whole game? Pika to you too, little hero. Both of you, keep up the great work. Way to go, Tim! Oh my God, it's my sister! Time. My sister and mom, why are they here? By the way, guys, so we don't know who's evil and who's not, so we have to give everyone that suspicious eye. Like, I'm paying attention to that mayor. Tim, I was so proud of you today. Irene Goodman. Where is your husband? What did You're you do with amazing, them? You're amazing, Tim. Okay, Irene Goodman and Sophia Goodman. You think so? Where's my everyone introduction? Everyone knows all about the amazing work you two have done. There was the Eevee abduction case, the fossil stealing spree, and the Rhine Tower standoff case, too. That's, these are all the first game. They even made a movie based on the R case. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I thought that movie was pretty good, but how come Mom and me didn't even show up in it? Are they? Are you freaking talking about I have no idea, but movies usually do their own thing, don't they? Yeah, I guess. Wait. What oh, the? by the way, I've been meaning to ask you something. This is Dad's Pikachu, right? Yeah. He's my partner at the moment, though. I see. Whoa, whoa. What's with all the staring? He saved your dad from trouble many times. Wow! Oh, <laughs> Pikachu! The news is about to start. Maybe there's an update on that Corviknight. Bro, that movie bit was freaky. They freaking speaking to us. So this is what I was trying to say earlier, right? It's if they're like spinning off whatever just happened here, it's almost like they're saying that the movie's events are different, you know? Like, so you know the twist in the movie where the movie says his father went. It's like it's different here. It's like this is the actual tale that happened. <laughs> and I think the story would have to be different in this game because, you know, everyone could have just seen the movie. Right? There she is! Oh my god, she's in the game. <laughs> we interrupt your regular scheduled program to bring you this breaking news. According to amateur footage we've received from a viewer, Pokemon appear to have caused an explosion. This explosion occurred in the mountain range northeast of Rhine City. This may be related to the recent uptick in incidents involving Pokemon. Rhyme City Police and the newly established Pokemon Protection Bureau are investigating. Amelia Christie, signing off. You look like an AI. Hey, Tim. Did you catch that? I hope that incident doesn't have anything to do with Dad. Same here. Mewtwo told me, two years ago, Dad's alive. And we'll be able to find him, as long as we don't give up. Yeah, Mewtwo is still our only connection to finding Harry. Whispering to Pikachu, are you? Oh. You're just like your father, talking to Pokémon like that. What? Oh, <laughs> really? How could our dad talk to Pokémon? It's been two years since the R incident. Since then... We've solved all kinds of cases. Yeah, I think that's the only clue we have. That it's like our dad met Mewtwo before he disappeared. So if anyone would know where Mewtwo is, where, where our dad is, it's Mewtwo. The day after the award ceremony. Whoa, that's a lot of Whimsicott. Sure is. They ride through on seasonal winds every year. I hear they can be real pranksters. Shut up! If they get in a house they like, they scatter cotton everywhere. Are they intentionally making Sounds puns? Sounds like a pain to clean up. Yep. The sweet smell of coffee is calling my name. Okay, but what if they're it's coming the from Kikachu the freaking explosion? Like the wind from that? <laughs> yeah. 
<sighs> oh my goodness. <sighs> it's our old detective buddy. <sighs> Frank Holiday. <laughs> he helped us in like the ending of the last game. Inspector Holiday. Did you finally find my dad? Sorry. No. I'm here on a different case. We've received reports of a jewel theft. Could you lend me a hand with this one? Of course. Sucker, I'm not that the good. The incident occurred at the Dennis residence, the mansion down the street. Sorry, but Brad is waiting for me. I'll go ahead and meet up with you there. I don't want to help with no jewel thief. Ah, uh, Mr. Holiday. Mr. Holiday, do you... But, okay, that's legit, right? Those whimsicots, they're coming from the explosion. We should investigate it that way. Bro, we have fighting types blocking off the way. <laughs> what is this sign? Don't feed the Pokemon. Alright, where's Holiday? Here he is. Tim. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on such short notice, Tim. This way, the crime took place at the dentist residence up ahead. Okay, maybe this relates. Pretty much, I think the first thing we need to look for is another lead on R. Because right now, we, we've run out of leads. That's why two years have gone by. We've run out of clues that our dad gave us to investigate. So we need something new to pop up. I guess that explosion is a clue. That's like the first sighting of Mewtwo since. Sucker, that's Brad! Then I insist that you stay out of official police business. You smell like crap. Well, well, well. If it isn't the great detectives. Why is he here? Oh yeah, he's at the police. That's so freaking weird. <laughs> it's been a good while, Brad. I see you're on the case too. I suppose that means you are as well. You private detectives do love sticking your nose into every little thing. If Mr. Dennis hadn't requested you personally, I'd be asking to leave right now. Yeah, he's still a jerk. Think he's still holding a grudge from that time we showed him up? <laughs> We thought he was evil in the last game, but he wasn't. That's enough, Brad. We're going to be conducting this investigation together. This is the scene of the crime, right? Yes. Look at his face! He still has that freaking weird profile pic! Like, what is that? Yes, this mansion belongs to Sanjeev Dennis. A jeweler. So he got robbed. We can figure this out. A Sableye did it. Hmm. Mr. Dennis is one of the wealthiest men in Rhyme City. Under normal circumstances, a civilian like yourself would never have the opportunity to meet him. Make sure you don't do anything to offend him. Oh, and don't get in the way of our investigation either. I have to. I have to investigate. The missing jewel. I admit, I think Brad was kind of useful though in the... A freaking whole photo? That's so cool. Oh my god, that's Sanjeev. <laughs> that's a bus bellboy. Bus boy? All right, Tim. Mr. Dennis is waiting for you in the- Oh, that is him. See, I knew I could judge appearances. It's that beer belly. Oh, Tim, I've been waiting for you. That is a ghoul! That is not a human! Did you see that? He's got a Rolex, though. <laughs> now, this sucker's freaking me out, man. His voice does not match him. <laughs> nice photo. My name is Sanjeev Dennis. I'm a jeweler, and this is my partner Growlit. Sorry to jump into it, but could you tell us what you know about the incident? Oh. A precious jewel was stolen while I was out of the house. It's called the Aurora Drop, and it's a very rare jewel indeed. The Aurora Drop. What a mysterious name. Magical even. The thief injured one of my staff members and made off with the jewel. Still sounds like a Sableye. Is something sticking out to you as odd? Well, the police are cheating my trusted butler as the prime suspect they think the butler did it <laughs> could you tell me a bit more about the stolen jewel it looks like the sableye's jewel is red but sableye's just steal any jewels so the sableye the, the thief must had to have gotten into the glass i think a sableye can do that right most gemstones must first be cut and polished into beautiful jewels but the aurora drop is said to have naturally formed into that shape the way it shines looks a bit like an aurora. Yes, that's precisely how it got its name. The aurora drop has been the subject of many a tale, but it was thought to be nothing more than fiction, even among us jewelers. For the longest time, we called it the jewel of legend. Wow, he wasn't kidding when he called it precious. Guess it's no surprise that someone wanted to steal it. It definitely sounds valuable. Where were you displaying it? 
I kept it securely locked within a special reinforced case inside my jewel storage room. There are locks on both the storage room door and the case. But somehow someone stole it. Okay, let's talk about the butler. Yes, they believe the thief is my own trusted butler, Barnes? Why do they think that? Because Barnes and I are the only people who can access the key to the storage room. What's keeping someone else from getting to it? The key is always kept around Growlithe's neck. If anyone but Barnes or myself attempted to take it from her, Growlithe would start barking. Hmm. How could a criminal get around that? Remember guys, you can use logic and figure these. My Growlithe is a very loyal Pokemon. She would never allow the key to be taken by a stranger. I don't see a key around Growlithe's neck right now. The police think Barnes took it. That would certainly make sense, assuming Barnes really is the culprit. Mr. Dennis, if possible, I'd like to talk with Barnes. He's currently being questioned by the police. But you don't believe Barnes is a thief, is that correct? I've known Barnes since we were young. He worked in this home in the barn for years and has always served us well. I'm certain he'd never steal from me. And I couldn't possibly imagine him hurting anyone. Okay, so if we find the key, we can see the foot, the, the fingerprints and see that it's not Barnes' fingerprints. First, let's go to the jewel storage room. We might be able to see like footprints or something. And then we can match it up with Mr. Barnes. Hey, this room is currently being searched by the police. I'm going in. We may be investigating a crime, but we should still respect the resident's privacy. Are you freaking kidding me? I'll walk in on whoever I want. All right, here's the police. Is that a Vulpix? The jewel storage room has been left exactly as it was at the time of the incident. Inspector Holiday's already filled me in. Yes. Do I have a badge? I guess I don't. So I'm not a real detective, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm qualified, but I don't have like the badge. Hey man, I was looking at that. So this is the door to the room. The lock doesn't seem to be broken. Yeah, so that means whoever the thief is, they got the key. Because there's also no windows in the room. So somehow they got the key off Growlithe's neck. What's this in the freaking fluff? What is this? Okay, whatever. So a red jewel. What a vibrant red like boiling hot lava. It's almost too bright to look at. What is it? Alpha Sapphire crap? This one's a blue jewel. It's a deep blue like the ocean. It has a kind of magical feel. I guess it's a... I don't know, Ruby and Sapphire reference. A green jewel. That fresh green color reminds me of the forest. Just looking at it is coming. Why does this matter? What a beautiful jewel. It's so clear and sparkly. Absolutely brilliant. Why, why do they matter? Why do they let me talk to those? Okay, and this is the broken one. This area looks more disturbed than the rest. Okay, let's investigate around. I want to look at this fluff. It's a feather. Here's a blue feather. Do you think the Pokemon it belonged to is in this room? Who has a blue feather? Uh, Cramorant? Next. It was- f look how this was sliced! It's like a freaking Scyther sliced it. Dude, that slice is way too clean. If this was a human, they would have done a little circle poke out. I don't know. It's not like a Sableye's nail could do that. What's the point of looking at this fluff? Wait, Whimsicott's? There's some con on the ground. It really looks fluffy and soft. Oh my god, what if the jewel was on one of those Whimsicott's? It was their escape. Hey, Tim. Don't Check do it. it out. Looks good, huh? That's evidence, dog. These are a key part of detective work, you know. Yeah, whatever. Now quit goofing off and investigate. So they only managed to get the door key to the room, not the key to this. The jewel case is still locked. Bro, I could freaking outsmart the growl. Just give it a stake and take the key. What a horrible defense <laughs> to protect your freaking the room to your jewels. A freaking stake can break it. Okay, so here's Pikachu's theories. The culprit unlocked the case and stole it. Shut up. The culprit hasn't actually stolen the jewel yet. Wait, okay, we'll get back to that in a second. And the third one, the culprit cut open the case and stole the jewel. Okay, this is what we thought. But this is an interesting idea. The culprit may not have taken the Aurora drop out of the jewel storage room. 
Okay, no, no. That, they're not an idiot, dude. They stole it already. It's out of the room. Oh, here. He's Sanjeev is here. Let's ask him about the, the second key. I have a question, Mr. Dennis. Who has the key to the jewel case? I have it right here. I always carry the key to the jewel case on my person. Okay. I've known Barnes a very long time, but I still won't give him this key. It sounds like it could have been Barnes. <laughs> the Aurora Drop is meant to be a symbol of revival for Rhyme City. Anyway, I'm counting on you, Tim. Okay, the only way we can move forward now is if we find Barnes. What? Hey, you know where Barnes is? I don't care. Is Barnes in this? Frick, where's Barnes? What's this? Broken glass! Okay, well if it was Barnes, he wouldn't have to break into the mansion. Unless you guys got security cameras, you clearly don't. Or you'd be looking at them. We have forced entry. Did a Cramorant freaking shoot a pistol out? I mean... Oh! What's all this? Pokemon feathers? It looks like it. They're scattered all over the floor and the window's open. One of these feathers is darker than the other. You're right. The other six are a lighter shade of blue. Okay. So there's six feathers here, which are this shade of blue. And then there's one feather in here, which is a darker blue. So what does that mean? There are two different Pokemon? One of the Cramorants is shiny? I'm joking. I'm going back downstairs. I'm going to look for like Pokemon to talk to. Since you dumbasses have no security cameras. What do you know? Man. Hey, can I ask a couple questions? Don't want to waste time with me? Oh, come on. I want to finish with the Pokemon first. Any other Pokemon? You. Look. He's got a freaking Lugia photo too. That's so cool. Hi. Oh my god. Clefable. All ears for my mansion gossip. <laughs> Fab. Oh, it's Clefable. Mrs. Dennis. You freaking did it. His name is Sanjeev Dennis, right? The wife wanted it. <laughs> Can I ask you a few questions? Hey. Okay, you're the office gossip queen. We need you. Seems like she's real suspicious of us. Maybe she's feeling sensitive after the incident here. No, it's because you're this girl's partner and she yes. did it. You certainly don't look like you're with the police. State your business. Claudia Dennis. It was you and you framed the butler. But why break in through the freaking window then? I'm sorry to bother you, but do you mind if you ask you some questions? I do mind, actually. Oh, she's pleading the fifth. She's she's implicit. The police said that Barnes is behind all this. So the matter is settled. We've heard that he's under suspicion, yes. But we can't be certain it was Barnes who committed the crime. You sound just like my husband. But nothing you say will change the fact that Barnes is the culprit. Barnes is Pokemon Ducklet. Was up to no good. I saw it with my own eyes. Did you witness the crime? Barnes' partner Ducklet was involved in the crime? You look as though you don't believe me. Alright, check this out. She set the butler up. She knows he has a Ducklet. So she, scat she broke the window and scattered feathers. But what she didn't realize is when she robbed the jewel, a feather from her own Pokemon accidentally fell off there. That's why it's a different blue. But she tried to set up the butler. Is it true that you witnessed the crime? Well, I didn't exactly see clearly, huh? But I did witness some irrefutable proof. What exactly did you see? At the time of the incident, I was enjoying a cup of tea in my room on the second floor. Oh, in the other room that we can't go into. Okay. Just then, I noticed a bird Pokemon flying outside the window. A bird Pokemon? Yes, I clearly saw a blue bird Pokemon. It had to have been Ducklet. We did find blue feathers near the window and in the storage room. So those were ducklets? In hindsight, she was obviously stealing the jewel, the ducklet. I also heard a faint sound just before that, like something metallic. A metallic sound? Do you know what could have made that noise? I know I don't, but the storage room was ransacked, wasn't it? I suppose she must have broken something in the act. And I've heard it confirmed that ducklets' feathers were found in the room. Isn't that proof enough that Barnes is the culprit? What metallic sound? Wait. 
Corvanite. The Corvanite stole it. Because it's a steel type. Maybe its wings can cut that cleanly. And that's the darker blue. Mr. Dennis seems confident that Barnes is innocent. Oh yes, I'm sure he is. He's always been too trusting. Especially when it comes to Barnes. Those two really trust each other that much? I'm told Barnes has worked here for a very long time. Much longer, in fact, than I've known Sanjeev. I suppose that's why Barnes is always taking my husband's side. What do you mean by that? Whenever my husband and I have a disagreement, <laughs> whenever my husband and I have a disagreement, Barnes inevitably sides with Sanjeev. Sanjeev, how do you say it? Even though I'm sure he believes he's being impartial, that lack of self-awareness is yet another one of his many flaws. I get the feeling Claudia's not a huge fan of Barnes. Bro, you wanted him out of the house, so you framed him. As it is, I'm not even sure my husband understands the true value of that jewel. After getting his hands on something so precious, why does he want to donate it to Rhyme City? So you're against donating the Aurora Drop? Of course I am. Treasures like that are meant to be prated about for the general public. They should be preserved for quiet observation by a select few. Okay, so that's a motive. She didn't want him to donate the jewel, so she stole it. But I mean, if you live with them, couldn't you have done it better? Couldn't you have like drugged him and stolen the key? Hey, Growlithe, I gotta talk to you. It's Dennis's partner, Growlithe. She sure doesn't look happy. Wait, Growlithe, don't you know who took it from you? Apparently, she feels responsible. No wonder she's so down. Maybe we should leave her alone for a while. Maybe she was sleeping. Maybe they drugged the, the food bowl. And she fell asleep. Okay, so here's our current theory, right? The Corviknight did it, but the Corviknight's not a freaking human. It's not gonna walk in and steal the jewel. So the Corviknight's working with someone. I would imagine the Corviknight's working with the wife. Hmm. It's some tea to serve to visitors. I prefer coffee myself. Why do I look at that? Hmm. Ask me anything you'd like. Okay, this is about him donating it. What makes the Aurora Drop a symbol of revival for Rhyme City? Two years ago, during the art incident, my jewel shop suffered considerable damage. Wait, you're a victim of the art incident? Yes, some Pokemon who'd been exposed to art went berserk. Their rampage destroyed my shop, to say nothing of the damage done to my jewels and other goods. By that time, I already had the Aurora Drop. I kept it stored safely in the shop. Of all the jewels in my shop, the Aurora Drop was the only one to remain unscathed. In fact, the brief fell so perfectly around the Aurora Drop that you might believe it was being protected. Ever since then, the Aurora Drop became known as the jewel that survived the R incident. People started visiting my shop just to see it. And thanks to all that attention, my business was able to get back on its feet. So the jewel revived him. I've decided to donate it to Rhyme City. The Aurora Drop? But why donate something so precious to you? It's not just precious to me. That's exactly why I decided to donate it. Mayor Myers has done his part in improving our city by declaring the start of Pokemon Friendship Week. <laughs> I thought it was about time I did mine. So I wanted to donate the jewel that survived the R incident as a symbol of Rhyme City's revival. I hope that by doing so, I can help liven up not just my shop, but the whole city as well. Okay, so for the whole past two years, the whole city's been kind of gloomy, I guess, since the R incident. Maybe even like untrusting of Pokemon generally. So they're trying to make change, him and the mayor. Okay, so if we have to solve this crime, the first thing we need to do is find a way to prove Barnes is innocent. Wait, looks like some jeweling tools have been left in here. I wonder if Mr. Dennis uses this room as a study too. Some jeweling tools? What are those, like to polish them? You guys work here, right? Hello there, Detective Tim. What the frick? No, oh, uh, I mean, Detective Goodman? <laughs> This guy hired off Fiverr? Larry Turner, newest member of the dentist residence. You look like you were paid off by the wife. Wait, you are the detective, right? That's what Mr. Dennis said at least. I got this job a little while ago, but I'm not still used to talking all fancy. Uh oh, is that a problem? Well, it's a good thing for me that Barnes deals with all the important guests. My main duties are taking care of the Pokemon, managing the house and groundskeeping. Do you take care of the Growlithe? Anyway, uh, you wanted to ask about what happened, right? I mean, I already told the police everything I know. I'm really sorry for taking up more of your time. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. I'm not complaining or anything. It's just that I don't remember what happened very well. Something attacked me out of nowhere, and I blacked out. Something attacked him? So not the thief then? Can you please tell us more about that? Okay, so he's new here, and someone attacked him. I was just doing my job like normal today. I'd made food for the Pokemon, 
did some cleaning around the mansion, that sort of thing. I think I was tidying the garden when it happened. I saw Ducklet fly out of a second story window. Saka, she tossed the Ducklet out. As I recall, I wondered where she was going. I mean, usually Ducklet just walks out the front door. It seemed weird to me, so I went upstairs to see what was going on. That's when I saw the door to the jewel storage room was wide open. As if that wasn't shocking enough, the moment I went to look inside, I got punched by a Pokemon! The next thing I knew, I was lying on a sofa and someone was treating my wounds. Okay, so this made Barnes look guilty, like he just had his ducklet steal it and then escape. But if Barnes was guilty, then there wouldn't be another Pokemon in the room to attack him. Maybe the ducklet actually f flew off because it was scared. The next thing I knew, I was lying on a sofa and someone was treating my wounds. A Pokemon punched you? Yeah, I feel like I glimpsed a small red figure for just a moment. What, a freaking sock? Based on the size, it couldn't have been human, so I'm guessing it was a Pokemon. A red Pokemon? Do you know what kind it was? Is there a red Pokemon with a blue feather? Wait. Wait, a scissor? Maybe a, a scissor can open the case. I'm not really sure. It all happened so fast. But no one's surviving a punch from a scissor, man. Did you see anything else when the Pokemon attacked you? The thief who brought the Pokemon along was probably nearby. Saka, he looks like a red Pokemon. In case you haven't heard, Mr. Dennis says he's gonna donate the Aurora Drop. Seems like Mrs. Dennis is against that plan. They've been fighting about it almost nightly. Okay, she's the one with the motive. Now then, Mr. Barnes, well, thank you not to leave the mansion until further notice. Understood. Oh. Hey, it sounds like the police finished questioning Barnes. Let's go talk to him. Thank you. That's him? Brandon Barnes. You don't look like a butler, bro. Aren't you supposed to be like 90? Huh. How did it come to this? Why are the police so suspicious of me? Excuse me, are you Mr. Barnes? Hmm, who might you be? I'm Detective Tim Goodman. Mr. Dennis has hired me to investigate the crime that occurred here. Is that so? Uh, my apologies, I'm Brandon Barnes. I work here at the Dennis residence as a butler. D does he do anything, Brad? He's just been here. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? I realize you must be tired since you were just questioned by the police. Please don't worry about that. If you've been hired by Mr. Dennis, then it's my duty to give you my full cooperation. Okay, let's look for some holes in the story. What would you like to speak to me about? Okay. Let's see where he was at the time of the incident. So... The wife was in the room next door drinking tea. Some worker was outside doing gardening and he saw the ducklet fly out. And then also at this time, there was a red Pokemon in the jewel room that when the gardener went inside, got punched by the red Pokemon. Okay, so where were you? I was away when the incident occurred. That's not a good sign. It wasn't until after I'd finished my errand and entered the house that I realized something was amiss. I heard Turner cry out from the second floor. Okay, that's the guy who got punched. When I rushed upstairs, I found him collapsed on the floor in front of the jewel storage room. So that means Barnes was the first witness to arrive at the scene of the crime. Did you see the thief or their partner Pokemon? No, nothing like that. Wait, if Barnes ran up the stairs, you'd think he would have run straight into the thief. If you didn't see anyone, could they have escaped from the second floor? Did you check the storage room? Yes. The door was already open, and when I looked inside, I saw that the Aurora Drop was gone. I then contacted Mr. Dennis and the police right away. Is there anyone who can corroborate your whereabouts at the time? The sucker doesn't have an alibi! It was only afterward that Mrs. Dennis came out of her room to see what the commotion was, so she was in her room. And the only others in the house at the time were Clefable and Growlithe. Could Clefable be a red Pokemon if you saw a blur of it? Naturally, no one can take witness statements from Pokemon. So I'm afraid I have no alibi. Okay, we can use Pikachu to get some alibis. Growlithe guards the key with constant vigilance. So I imagine it would have been very difficult for anyone else to take it from her. So, according to the police, right? Barnes is the first one on the scene of the crime. There's no thief in sight and the jewel is missing. And there's glass broken, so it looks like he stole it somehow. But I would never do something so senseless. At least this confirms that only those two have access to the key. 
Okay, about your Ducklet. Yes. Ducklet is my dear partner Pokemon. Just look at this photo. You mentioned that she helps you out with your work. What exactly does she do? Let's see. She runs errands for me, such as buying coffee beans from a local cafe. Oh, she buys coffee beans. Nice. There's a place nearby called the Hi Hat Cafe. Yeah, we went there in the first game. She regularly goes shopping there by herself. I asked her to go to the cafe today, in fact, but she hasn't returned yet. The feathers around the scene of the crime are ducklets, right? Yes, no question about it. But I haven't the faintest idea why ducklets' feathers would be there. Yeah, because the wife literally planted it. Like, if Ducklet helps with the groceries and all, she easily has opportunities to gather feathers. Just the thought of her getting caught up in the crime somehow. I'm so worried I can hardly think straight. Okay, so the only direction we have now is to question the Pokemon that might have been here. Oh, it's two different Manectrix. This is just some other guard Manectric. Okay, the Manectric's not helping. You want to help, man? What do you want, great detective? Clearly, Barnes used the key to get inside the storage room, which he has. Then had Ducklet fly off with the jewel. It does look like that. That's my working theory. But we're going to find this Ducklet that flew the coop. Then we'll get definitive proof. You'll see. Are you following any leads other than Barnes? Well, of course we are. We've already collected statements from every last person in this house. Do you mind if I ask what your impression of each of them was? Well, I suppose I could tell you that much. Mr. Dennis seems rather shaken by Barnes falling under suspicion. And his wife Claudia is reacting quite impetuously. She's been approaching us repeatedly to demand that we hurry and wrap up our investigation. One of their staff members, Turner, has been very cooperative with our investigations. He's told us a lot about everything that happened up until he lost consciousness. I suppose that's all I can say for now. Okay, let's question. I want to talk to the Growlithe first. Growlithe, how did they get the key? Hey Growlithe, sorry to bug you when you're already feeling down, but would it be alright if you ask some questions? You're willing to talk to us if it'll help Sanji? <laughs> What? How can you tell the, the nickname through the Growlithe? Sanji? Growlithe's nickname for Dennis. Okay, let's first ask about your relationship with Barnes. She says Barnes is a kind and well-mannered person. He and Dennis are close and she's never seen them fighting or arguing. Mr. Dennis really does seem to trust Barnes after all. And Growlithe likes Barnes too. Do you remember anything about the time of the incident? You don't know because you were napping. What? Your breakfast was so tasty that you ate too much and it made you sleepy. I knew it. You got drugged. <laughs> Been there, believe me. What are you even talking about? You woke up when Barnes got home? That would have been right before all the commotion happened. And when you woke up, your precious key was gone? She says she'd never let anyone other than Dennis or Barnes even touch the key. So that's why you feel extra responsible for what happened, huh? Hmm. So we need to find proof of like some Pokemon sedatives. <laughs> she did a good job setting Barnes up. Like really the only oddity, I guess, is that blue feather. Okay, Clefable, you're gonna have to speak. Faye, what? You think we're thieves returning to the scene of the crime? You've got it all wrong. We're not here to steal anything. We're actually great detectives looking to catch the thief. Please, can you answer some questions? Yes, really, come on. You can trust us. Fei Fei? Yeah, help us out. And I'm sure Claudia's bad mood will clear up too. Fei Fei? What? Are you not evil too? So you're willing to talk to us? Thanks. Guess Clefable was worried we'd do something bad to Mrs. Dennis. We are. We're about to lock her up. <laughs> okay, let's let's get some context about you. Do you have a job here at the mansion? Faye. Ah, no job per se, unless you count spending time with Claudia. Isn't it tough hanging out with someone so prickly? Faye. Claudia's not a bad person, you say? Sorry, I didn't mean to be insulting. Uh-huh. So Claudia's always arguing with someone or other. But when it's just you and her together, she starts to regret the whole thing. Ah, I get it now. Your job is to cheer her up when she gets into argument. Wow, you're actually pretty nice. I bet Clefable is really important to Mrs. Dennis. You mean she argues with people and then feels bad in private? Okay, so where were you at the time of the incident? Did anything strange happen today? Faye. Clefable saying she got really sleepy while playing in the mansion this morning. Yeah, it was probably after breakfast. 
Fei Fei. Then she dozed off and doesn't know what happened after that. That's too bad. How about Barnes? Do you get along with him alright? Fei Fei. Claudia doesn't like Barnes, so Clefable tries not to have much to do with them. Fei. But she doesn't think Barnes is a bad person. After all, she says Barnes ran to help Turner when he got hurt. You were still awake for that? Wait. Does that mean Clefable saw Barnes going upstairs to help Turner? Yeah, it's gotta. Clefable, what else can you tell us? Fei Fei, Clefable was dozing near the front door this morning. When Barnes got home from doing stuff outside, it woke her up. She woke up and greeted him at the door. Fei 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 Fei. So that means they broke in and left through that window. Then Clefable and Barnes heard Turner cry on the second floor, so they both went running upstairs. And that's when, to their surprise, they found Turner on the floor. That means when Turner was attacked, Barnes was still on the first floor. Yo, it could have been the wife! She just punched him and went to her room. She wouldn't be stupid enough to actually have the jewel in her room, would she? Yeah, but how are you gonna prove this testimony, dog? This doesn't hold up in court, a freaking Clefable testimony. So now we know Barnes is innocent, but we need proper... We need proper proof, because his alibi is a freaking Clefable. <laughs> okay, right now we have no other leads. So the only thing we can do is go to the city and look for the red Pokemon in the crowd or look for Ducklet. Ducklet was supposed to buy coffee beans in the morning. So we can go to the Hi Hat Cafe and look for Ducklet. Lillipup's partner. Huh? You mean you won't help me? I'm not doing this case right now. I'm busy. Your Lillipup is staying missing for the whole game. I'm looking for a Ducklet and red Pokemon. So Hi-Hat Cafe should be over. I know y'all have the jewel. I just can't prove it yet. What? Where's Hi-Hat Cafe? I guess it's this way. Wouldn't it be cool if you could find Lillipup? Like, without solving the case as well. If you could just find the quiet place. Drop! Hey, wait up! It's gone. Its hands look like freaking tentacles. I didn't know that. Oh. Hello, I can go this way? Damn, bro, BDSB. Huh? It's not here. Must be hiding somewhere. Or, uh, can you believe what you I found a little pup! Little pup, I'm so glad you've been found. Pup, pup. Thank you so much for finding my dear little pup detective. You're welcome. I'm glad we could help. Lil, you ran off because you weren't getting enough playtime, didn't you? Lil. All right, then. We can play together as much as you like today. Pup, pup. The Trubbish could be a pretty good uh, ally for the crime. You could hide stuff in the trash. People would never search for the jewel in trash. Okay, we need to look for a red Pokemon. Was it you? Self-appointed city patrol. You kind of look like you could sucker punch someone. What are you up to, Chog? Well, Chog's hobby is to observe things around the city. All right, have you seen the red Pokemon? There's so many red Pokemon, you don't know which one we mean. We know it's a Pokemon that can use a move to slice clean through hard objects and one that can easily knock down a human with a punch. It is a scissor. Watch all. You haven't seen any Pokemon like that around here? All right, then. Oh, God, they're really fighting. BDSP, you jealous? All right, hi, hi, cafe. I haven't been in here in so long. I wonder if it looks the same. Oh, my frick, it does. Look, it's the mayor's daughter. It's the freaking oh, bartender. Yeah. Oh, I forgot you're my friend. Hello there. Another Fiverr voice actor. You know, these voices actually freak me out. I feel like I'm in a nightmare. Wow, what a coincidence running into you here. Yeah, I'm surprised as you are. Hmm, I think I've seen this girl somewhere before. Or I remember. Howard's notebook. She's the girl from the photo. Yes, Pikachu, this is Rachel. We go to college together. She's the mayor's daughter. Right, right. And you said she knows a lot about Pokemon too, didn't you? And she's just a classmate or... See, this is why I don't like telling you about my personal life. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm just looking out for you. I never heard you talk about actually having fun with people. Ah, well, anyway, who's that woman next to her? I know about her as much as you do. I don't think we've met before. Hey, Jessica, have you heard of these? Of course, it's an honor to meet the great detective. By the way, Tim, were you talking to Pikachu just now? But what? No way. Oh, no need to be embarrassed. I totally understand the urge to talk with your partner. But now that you're here, why don't you chat with us for a bit? It's like I don't care about you. I'm looking for the red Pokemon. Was it you? 
at work they say if you don't know what to do just ask slow king <laughs> there's no context <laughs> let me in ricardo what's his name i have to hear his name well look who it is pablo <laughs> amazing i think he knows our dad too god he has a milsery now Hi, Tim. Did something happen today? I noticed you weren't here this morning. Do you know the doctor that lives at the dentist's residence? Yeah, I know her. You're talking about Barnes's partner, right? She often comes here all on her own to buy coffee beans. She always comes with this cute little bag that I fill with beans for her. As far as I know, she takes them straight back to the mansion. In fact, she left with her usual order a couple minutes ago. Okay, what do you know about Barnes? Hey. The butler from Dennis's mansion? Yeah, he swings by the cafe pretty often after he's done with work. Barnes is a regular customer? Yeah, he loves coffee and jazz, so we've got plenty to talk about. But apparently, he's been really stressed lately. So he hasn't been stopping by as much. Yo, this kind of sounds like he could be guilty. He's been stressed, huh? Maybe he suspected something with the wife and he didn't know who to tell. I'm not sure if it's my place to tell you about a customer's personal matters. Please, we're just trying to help. It's for Barnes' sake. Ah, so it's for a case, huh? Then I guess I'd better tell you. He was worried about the jewel that Mr. Dennis was planning to donate to Rhyme City. Apparently, the Dennis's had a difference of opinion about that. Oh, the husband and wife. Barnes was trying to come up with a compromise that would satisfy both of them. But he said he just wound up getting stuck in the middle of the argument. That does sound stressful. I remember him saying he wished there was no jewel in the first place. He wished there was no jewel, huh? Anyway, that's all I know. I hope it helps. No, I don't think he took it. Okay, fine. I'll freaking talk to these two. You and Pikachu must be working hard, huh? Yeah, he's actually more helpful than he looks. Come on, Tim. You can give me a better compliment than that. <laughs> you seem different from usual somehow. Don't tell me that a word my dad gave you is already starting to change you. No, of course not. I'm the same as I've always been. Are you sure? I mean, we don't really know each other all that well. Maybe you just have the wrong impression of me? No way. I've had my eye on you for a while now, Tim. Excuse me? Oh, does that mean what I think she means? It's like I have a front row seat to the great detective in action. It feels like an exciting new adventure could break out at any moment. Ah, right. Did you get your hopes up for a moment there, Tim? Quiet, you. Okay. You know, you just have to freaking ask her out. Soon. Talk to it me, Jessica. It's such an honor to meet you, Tim. I'm so scared right now. Thank you for solving the R case. You have no idea what that meant to me. That's actually a freaking huh? sinister oh, uh, in there. Yeah. I mean, poltergeist. Like, look, it's even got like the belly. Jessica used to work with my mother years ago. That's how we met, and we've been friends ever since. Oh, I see. But it's been a while since we've met up like this. About two years, I think. We've been so busy lately. There hasn't been much time to get together. I have no idea. You'd become friends with. The famous great detective were you surprised yes of course i work at a pizzeria in bamboo boro if you're ever in the area stop by i'll treat you to one of our awesome pizzas all right did you hear that tim let's go somewhere the pizza place where jessica works is actually pretty famous sounds great i'd love to go i'll take you up on that offer you know you freaking suck at asking her out right tim there's actually something i wanted to talk to you about what's up well it's something it's about something going on at home sounds serious I'm not sure how much help I'll be, but you can always talk to me. I don't want to waste your time, though. Don't worry about it. I'm working right now, but we can meet up tonight if you're free. Sure, that works. Thank you, Tim. Okay, then how about you stop by my apartment later this evening? Hey, not bad, Tim. <laughs> but aren't we supposed to have dinner with your family tonight? Yeah, but this sounds serious. I can't brush her off. <laughs> the least I can do is hear her out for a little bit. Fair enough. I'm sure your family will understand. See, was that so hard? We've heard enough testimonies. Let's go meet with Ducklet. I kind of want to go by Serenity Park. Maybe the wife could have collected Ducklet feathers from Serenity Park. But come on, you live with the Tim, Ducklet. Tim. What do you want? This is look. He's looking. I'm chasing me. I gotta run extra fast. That was really. Oh. Hmm. What in the world were you doing? What happened here? My apologies, sir. Did something happen, Brad? Ducklet was spotted near the mansion just now. But when my subordinates try to catch her, they let her escape. Do you know where she ran off to? He doesn't. I know. You don't have to call the FBI Pokemon. She's in Serenity Park. They're all in such a rush, you know? No, I don't want to look for the red Pokemon. I want to go to Serenity Park. Yes. Ducklet is definitely here. So, 
Ooh, Sarina. Mm -hmm. But Sarina mm -hmm. can't cut things. The ultimate, the ultimate uh, suspect. Robbled? You're red. Frick, there's, they intentionally put all these red Pokemon here. Robbled and Sarina can't cut stuff. It's definitely Scizor. I just never imagined Scizor punching things. Oh my god, that was a realistic Sudowoodo cry. <laughs> that was a 5 or 2. Oh, a Rebombi. Red Pokemon. Do I know you? You there! Wait, you wouldn't happen to be that great detective duo, would you? Charles Murloc? I am such a huge fan of yours! Sucker, you look like you, you know but are. Oh dear, I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Charles Murloc. I'm a scientist working here in Rhyme City to deepen our understanding of Pokemon. A scientist, huh? Remember guys, we don't know who to trust. Mayor, this man. What's that? You'd like to hear more about what I do? Actually, I my research has been recognized by Mayor Myers himself. Now I'm helping out with the new policy that he and the city council are working on. You might say I'm the brains behind Rhyme City's latest policies. This guy's intense. And he seems like the type who doesn't even listen to what others are saying. If you two great detectives have any questions for me, by all means, fire away. After all, I have something in common with you both. We're all working to help Rhyme City. We're all coming from the same place, comrades with the same goals. So I'm prepared to answer any questions you have. I guess their only choice is to play along for a bit. What a drag. Okay, what- okay, about your research. Excuse me. What, I, what type of research you doing? My research explores the nature of communication between people in Pokemon. Sounds complicated. No, it's quite simple, really. We're trying to help Pokemon understand human language. Oh, can I ask you a favor, Pikachu? Would you allow me to give you a quick health exam? Ow! <laughs> oh dear, is Pikachu upset with me? I only plucked a bit of fur, and the test results should be ready in just a moment. Suck, like you're gonna clone my Pikachu! This is a machine I created at the mayor's request. It can measure Pokemon's vital signs in record time. What? What? By freaking taking a piece of my hair? Why? How did I turn Italian? <laughs> in other words, it's made to quickly check a Pokemon's health. You can't check someone's health with a piece of hair. I say that's a good thing for both people. I guess in a sense you can, but not actually. I'd say that's a good thing for both people and their partners, wouldn't you? Yes, it sure sounds like it. Okay, it's ready. Now let's see. Hmm? What's it say? It's detecting caffeine? Did someone say caffeine? Seeing as he's working as a detective, I figured this was no ordinary Pikachu, but these results are truly fascinating. I suppose his trisiligarides are a bit high for Pokemon. My what? He does seem slightly different from a regular Pikachu though. Huh. I don't trust this man. I I'm, I'm happy not trusting him. I want to see him pop up. Come on Pikachu, stop sulking and let's go. Hi trisiligarides. My, we, no one knows what that means. Okay, thank goodness he's gone. Oh, you guys would... You guys would punch. That's the Lillipup girl. Hey, that rock. I've seen that rock before. Terrace? <sighs> this is the top, yeah? Look at that, Pikachu. Huh? From here, you have a perfect view of the dentist residence. <gasps> the ducklet could fly out here. Hmm. What are you thinking? I'm pretty sure that's the window that's in front of the jewel storage room. And that door? That's the door where she's inside drinking tea. A Pokemon capable of flying could go straight into the mansion from here. Yeah, if our thief was getting help from a Pokemon, this would be the perfect vantage point. Okay, but what, like, this, how could the scissor have flown to the window? Oh, did it freaking <laughs> take a ride on a Whimsicott? cut? What's this cotton doing here? It looks like trash to me. There's no trash, man. Okay, what else do we have? Can I look at that? Is this really nothing? <gasps> this is the scissor practicing its clean size slices. So, this is the window we could see before. Can I please go into her room? Okay, you know what? She freaking has the jewel in there. That's why they won't let us in. Have y'all seen the freaking red Pokemon, Whimsy? Okay, the red Pokemon. Have you seen any red Pokemon around here? Caught, caught. Oh, Ponyard is red. A freaking Ponyard could slice! 
and you've recently become friends with one, Ponyard. You often run into Ponyard at the Terrace in Serenity Park. And on windy days, you play with Ponyard by picking it up and fluffing it around. And flying it around. So you freaking... Uh, one of you is an accomplice. So a Ponyard flew on a Whimsicott, broke in, and stole the jewel. But two off points is one. It surely is working with the human, and that's how they got the key off the Growlit. And then two, what's the blue feather about? Is this cotton yours? Wim wim. Yeah, the Wimscott says it's theirs. How could you be so oblivious? I don't suppose you've been in the mansion? Wimsy? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Come on, you gotta remember at least that much. Wimsy. Oh, this one does. What does it say? It thinks it remembers going into the mansion while playing with its friends. It thinks so? That's not a very clear answer. Let's ask for more details. How did you get into the dentist residence? Wim. Hmm, you went through the window with your friends? And why would you do that? Whimsy. You don't remember anything after eating breakfast this morning? The heck does that mean? Please, it's really important. Just try to remember. Whimsy, Whimsy. Some human you don't know asked you to do it? What was this stranger like? Wim, Whimsy. You don't remember because it's someone you'd never seen before, huh? Now look here, you might be accessory to theft. You know, the only issue about Ponyard is that... How, the, how are you getting punched by a Ponyard? Does he even have hands? So Ponyard is up here somewhere. Okay, so there's a Ponyard hiding somewhere here. If I just pee on the rock, surely it'll come out. What's up with this rock? Can you think of any way to drop Ponyard here? Sing? I'll climb on it. Let's just hope it's actually here to see this. Oh, he's here. Pine. What? Okay, let me see if Ponyard has a fi- How do you get punched by Ponyard? You get shanked by them. How do you get punched by a- It's Ponyard. Pon, pon, pon. Okay, it's saying- <laughs> Dares thou try to put my cherished rock? What is the meaning of this? Thine answer shall determine thy fate. I will show thee no mercy. Wait, what? Wow, it's really angry. <laughs> Man, you think there could be a King Gambit in this game? Sorry, we just wanted to find you. We weren't trying to mess with your rock or anything. Pun. Phew, thank goodness. It said it'll forgive us, but just this once. Pun. You want to know why we were looking for you? Fair enough. We've got some questions we'd like to ask you. Bro, this thing's gonna murder us. Would you mind talking with us for a bit? Pun. It says it'll talk. Sucker, you're guilty. I don't want to talk to it. I want to wear a helmet. Okay. Let's learn about you. So you've been traveling all over as a part of your journey to warriorhood? I'm sorry, did you say journey to warriorhood? Apparently it travels all over the place to practice and improve its moves. Pun. It says that because it was born with these blades, it wishes nothing more than to master them. This might sound a bit strange, but you haven't uh, punched anyone recently, have you? Pun. Ponyard says it's never punched a single person or Pokemon in its life. Pun. Good point. You could cut something with those hands of yours, but you definitely couldn't punch it. Yeah, on second thought, you'd wind up with a different injury if you were punched by a Ponyard. Are there any other Ponyard in the city beside you? Bro, they all look the same. What's it saying? Apparently, it's never seen any other Ponyard. Oh! Okay, I got it. I got it. So, the butler, he comes upstairs and he sees the Ponyard. Robbing the jewel, but he gets punched by the wife. That's it. Okay, about the dentist residence. We heard from some Whimsicott that they went to Mr. Dennis's mansion. Were you the one who went with them there? Pon. Ponyard's not sure if it was the same place, but it vaguely remembers going to a big house. Pon. It says it entered the house together with the Whimsicott. How did you get inside the mansion? Apparently, Ponyard likes to get picked up and flown around by Whimsicott. Did you happen to cut a jewel case when you're in that mansion? Pon. So you can remember the sensation of cutting through something, but the rest is a blur? So it ate the breakfast too. Pon. It said its mind feels all foggy and it just can't remember what's going on at the time. That sure makes things difficult. Pon. Okay, have you seen our boy Ducklet? Our dog? Our girl? Have you seen Ducklet around anywhere? Pon. It hasn't seen her. Great, where could Ducklet have gone? Pawn? It's asking if we're done here so we can get back to training. It says it'll happily grace us with the demonstration. <laughs> okay, cut the rock. Let's see how precise it is. Whoa. It 
cut it. To think this is a Charmander compared to King Gambit. Hmm, this clean slice and the metallic sound Ponyard's blade made when it made contact. It all matches with what we know of the crime scene. But... Dude, the wife mentioned hearing the metallic noise from the other room. She sounds innocent. You know, she sounds like she is not aware of how the crime went. Wait. Oh my god, it wasn't the wife. So, your hands are blades, huh? Wow, that's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's it's when you get voice acting in scenes like that that you really fall in love with Pokemon. Think about it, man. When you, if you just run into a wild Ponyard, you don't get that same vibe. Now that makes me like Ponyard. <laughs> That's so cool. What the frick? How wonderful to meet you, Detective. Seriously, it's an honor. Yes. Yeah, who are you? Huh? Do you not know who I am? I'm kind of a big deal on the Rhyme University campus, and I know you go to school there too. They call me the quiz professor. I'm actually still a student, but that's what they call me. And this is my partner, Toucanon. She wants to freaking quiz me. What Pokemon catches prey using its long tongue? Oh, wow. I freaking wonder who. Let me answer. Like, for real, you have to make this complicated. Bingo, you got it. Look at song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, she's asking another question. What Pokemon uses its cute looks to put you off from its guard so it can steal you? It's freaking Purloin! I mean, it is nice that the game has detours like this. Oh my god, a third question. Best buds always stick together. What Pokemon move as a group? They're right over there. Yes, I finished it. Never come back into the story. Yeah, the wife almost doesn't sound like the bad one. It's someone who wants to steal it before it's donated to the city. Oh, hello, wife. So, check this out. They say the butler was the first one on the scene of the crime, right? They saw the gardener there who got punched. But what if the gardener did it? He's the one who got the punier to steal it. And he went upstairs and gave himself a fake injury to put himself out of the race. So no one would suspect him. You see, because the gardener guy, he only started working here recently. And maybe he's the one who put out the food for the Pokemon. And he drugged it. Uh, can you help me, Clefable? Do you know where the duckler could have gone? Wow, you can hear footsteps and voices coming from any room in the mansion? That's incredible. Now that you mention, I'm pretty sure I've heard that Clefable can hear sounds over half a mile away. But you were sleeping during the actual incident and only woke up when Barnes came home. Growlithe? You have some skills too. She said she's got a very keen nose. Alright, let's get Growlithe's help. Okay, let's do this. Bro, Pikachu's can jump, you know that, right? I'm sorry, but could you sit down for a sec? <laughs> this makes you wish Pokemon were real. All right. They kind of are, though. You can get a pet dog, you know. Can I freaking move? This is the first time I've ever given someone a ride. Why did you just repeat what I said? <laughs> Woo! I'm the Growlet. Sniff around. So Growlet, the Ducklet went this way. Sniff, sniff, sniff. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. But what is this pathway that the Ducklet took? <laughs> yeah, Pokemon are real to an extent, man. Sniff, 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 sniff. Okay. We should be able to tell something from the way this ducklet is moving. Yes, sir. Yeah, you definitely went to Serenity Park. Hey, where'd it go? Robo? I think our theory about uh, a human punching them makes sense. Because Ponyard definitely is the Pokemon that sliced it. Ducklet, you're freaking in here. <gasps> there you are, Ducky! So Ducklet is hiding. I was wondering who'd found me. It's good to see a friendly face. Wait, who's that on your back? Hi there, I'm the great detective Pikachu. And you're a friend of Growlitz? I'd like to think so. Putting that aside though, could you tell me why you're way out here? Some strange humans were chasing me. It was really scary. I don't know what I could have possibly done to make them so upset. 
They think you may have been involved in a crime. Huh? What crime? Something precious was stolen from the house. And you and Barnes are currently under suspicion. Say what? Neither of us would ever do something like that. I know, I don't think it was you. Unless they use Ducklet going out and buying coffee to their advantage to sneak the jewel out. And so it's like in the pouch there. But th what doesn't add up is why Ducklet took the freaking window. Barnes must have good taste, much like myself. You drink that black water too? I tried it once because Barnes seems to enjoy it so much. But I practically gagged when it hit my tongue too bitter. Hey, <laughs> it's a sophisticated flavor for sophisticated Pokemon. Yes, well, I'm sure I'll be sophisticated like that someday. Just watch. See that water over there? I love bathing in it. Why is this relevant? Oh yeah, maybe I should try too. Whoa there, Growlithe. Aren't you a fire type? Pretty sure a bat's a bad idea. Oh, good point. Fire Pokemon can't take bats? It's actually super effective? Okay, where were you at the time of the incident? In the morning. All I did was eat breakfast, like always. Then I got really sleepy, not like always. If you fell asleep after breakfast, when did you go out? Well, at some point, Turner woke me up. I usually go out shopping right after Barnes asks me to. But today I was in a hurry because I overslept. So I rushed to grab my bag and flew out from a window on the second floor. That's why she used the window. And you're sure it was Turner who woke you up? Yes, I'm sure. And Grout, you fell asleep too? Yep, but only because today's breakfast was so yummy. I guess I ate so much I got sleepy after. Do you two always eat your meals together? Not usually, no. I always eat with Cramorant. What the frick? What? There's a Cramorant in the household? Yup. Cramorant is Turner's partner. Okay, he freaking did it! <laughs> I think the jewel is freaking in the sack there. That's how he snuck it out of the house. While also pretending to have been in the house the whole time. Huh, is that so? But where is the Cramorant? Bit strange that Turner never mentioned that. No, no, no. It makes more sense he would have given his partner the jewel. Like it's in the Cramorant's mouth. We should probably go talk to him then. Can you track Cramorant down by sand Crowlet? If you have something with Cramorant sent on it, then sure. Yes, sir. So that's the dark feather. Okay, so Ducklet has to stay hiding here while we look for Cramorant. Run, Growlet, run. Eat the raw boot. Whoa, cowboy. Whoa. Okay. Well, did you get a whiff of Cramorant scent? Yes, I've got it. It's still quite strong, so Cramorant is probably walking around here this morning. So we just need to follow that scent. Okay, Growl, follow your nose. Okay, it, it makes sense because Cramorant hides things in its- Shut up. Cramorant hides things in its mouth. It's so weird they got a- They got wild Pokemon to help with the crime. Like, how could you rely on wild Pokemon? Those investigators are so ass. I mean, there's like Whimsicott fluff everywhere and they couldn't pick up on it. Are you in the freaking alley? Oh my goodness, you're in the freaking alley. This is where the Trubbish went. Now that I'm just me, maybe the Trubbish will talk to me. Hey. What the frick is going on over here? I want to see the scent go to it. Hey, Pikachu over there. You know, you can't swallow it. It'll freaking cut you up. Drop it. Drop it. Ah! I mean, I guess it's not a diamond. In Squalor Paradise. Ah. Yes, it's Cramorant. Must be feeling pretty carefree to fall asleep in a place like this. We've been looking for you, Cramorant. What? Oh, hey, it's Growlithe. What you doing here? That's what I'd like to ask you. Hmm? Wait, what's going on? Sorry to bother you when you just woke up, but do you think you can answer some questions? Who are you? <laughs> Who the frick is this Pikachu? No need to be scared. I'm the great detective Pikachu and I'm here to help you. Great, the what's it, Pika who? Pikachu is my friend and he has some questions for you, Cramorn. I uh, still don't know what's going on, but sure. What do you want to ask me, dude? <laughs> Why are you here? Hey. Why are you sleeping out here of all places? Because I got really sleepy after I ate breakfast. Are you not a part of the crime? Hey, me too. Whoa, really? Hmm, so Ducklet and all the others fell asleep. 
After that, Turner woke me up and I flew right out of the house. Why'd he wake you up? Uh, because what was it again? He said to go to the back alley, I think. You don't even remember that? Yeesh, what a guy. I kind of fell asleep a few times on my way here too. But in the end, I made it. I was so sleepy. But right when I was about to zonk out, I found this choice bed. So I took a nap, dude. He's talking about me, by the way. <laughs> you thought Trubbish was a bed? Yeah, dude's like super squishy. Ugh, this guy's something else. If you wanted to sleep, wouldn't it make more sense to go home first? I'm sure Turner's worried about you. <gasps> Turner. That's right, I gotta get back to Turner. Any particular reason? Because he's my partner, dude. Or wait, did he say not to go back? Which was it again? Hey, don't look at me. He probably said not to go back. It's in your belly. I really think you should get back. Turner must be worried about you. Okay, where were you during the incident? You probably don't remember. Hmm. I'd like to hear about Cr what Cremorant was doing at the time of the incident. You said you ate breakfast and got sleepy, right? Yep. You must have eaten a lot. Same as Zeus he, actually. But even now, my tum is so stuffed, dude. Wasn't breakfast a while ago? Why are you still so full? I'm not sure, dude. My tum feels the same as when I swallow something big. Why are you gonna tell me about the gardener? Turner's my partner. He's a good dude, dude. Me and him go way back. Cramorn is always helping Turner out with his duties at the house. If Turner calls for me, I head right over, no matter where he is. I even go shopping with him, dude. If he needs something carried, I just swallow it whole. Wait, you swallow it? Is that safe for anyone? It's fine, dude. Just rub my back and I'll hork up whatever's filling my tum. Lickety split. What brings you here? Well, I'm not great around humans. And humans don't usually come here, so it seemed like a safe place. Did they do something mean to you? No, I just don't like too much noise. And humans are so noisy, don't you think? Uh, I guess. Anyway, this place is nice and quiet. Have you noticed anything strange recently? Strange? Well, I've just been gathering trash from around the city like I do every day. You do that every day? Wow, thank you. It's just my routine. Wait, Trubbish collects trash? I thought you were trash. I guess I did collect some unusual trash today. Does that count as strange? What's so unusual about it? It was stuck to a Wimsicott's head. They were in front of a big house when I found it. A Wimsicott getting stuff stuck to its head doesn't sound all that unusual to me. Because you can't say stuff like that. Trash is important to Trubbish. Don't call it stuff. About the trash. Hey. Do you still have that trash? Yeah, I was saving it for a snack. Why, do you want it? I'd like to at least have a look at it. Could you show it to us? Sure, I guess. It's pretty crumpled up, but it looks like a note. Sniff, sniff. Hey, it smells like the rooms in our house. You mean Dennis's mansion? Hmm, that's interesting. Let me see. Open the window after Barnes leaves. That will be the signal. Wait. Where did Barnes even leave? Barnes left somewhere in the morning. It's when he came inside that all the sleeping Pokemon woke up. So open the window after Barnes leaves. Someone left this note. Let's say Turner left the note for Cram Warrant. Once the window was open, I'll send Ponyard in with Whimsicott to cut open the case. You should then be able to collect the jewel. If you play your part properly, you should be able to frame Barnes for everything. And if you're successful, we'll both be coming into quite a lot of money. Good luck. Well, both? It sounds like two humans are involved. This is a note from the culprit. What? So the thief had an accomplice, huh? That must have been why there are multiple Pokemon involved. Sorry about the rubbish, but you think we can have this piece of trash, please? Um, I guess if you want it that badly, sure. Thanks, I'll be sure to make it up to you later. Shall we head back home? Nah, I'm good. I'll head back at my own place. My tongue feels like way heavy from that breakfast I ate. The freaking jewels in his belly, guys. <laughs> to the mansion! Frick, I wish we could keep the Growlithe. <laughs> like a ride Pokemon, you know? If we need smells for future cases. Okay, so... Let's go to Tim. God, it's like Tim's not the main character anymore. <laughs> Look at him like an NPC. Can you get down on your own? Psh, please, who do you think I am? Mm -hmm. How did your investigation with Growlithe go, Pikachu? How about that, Tim? We found some incredible evidence. Really? What is it? So there's someone out there behind all this. Someone who sent Pokemon in from the outside and someone inside the mansion who let them in. Oh my god. It's the wife and the gardener. There must be some... F oh, we can investigate the food here. This is the dish that Growl's food was in. There's some sort of powder on it. Sleep powder? What kind of Pokemon can use sleep powder? 
It wasn't the Wimpscout because they came after. Oh, let's use Growlithe again. Don't inhale it like cocaine, okay? It will hurt you. It will put you to sleep. Where is it? Okay, it's leading us outside. There's definitely two humans involved. Right? Okay. So we go left from the mansion. Towards Serenity Park. Hey, what's that sign there? Who cares? Oh, Rabombi! They got it from that freaking Rabombi, guys. I don't need your help. I can do this myself. Watch. Let me find that Rabombi. What's going on? What did I do? What's up, Rabombi? You look panicked. My dear cutie fly went to gather nectar, but they haven't come back yet. It never takes them this long. I'm worried. What if something happened? Rabombi seems upset. I'd like to help a cutie fly a really tiny Pokemon. It'd be tough to find him in such a big city. Did I just find a freaking side quest? I thought the Rabombi did it. Of the freaking... Oh my god, it is a side quest. Oh god, there's so many cents. <laughs> Can you guys not be parallel to each other? God, they freaking are parallel. Okay, one goes down. No, they're still parallel. They're freaking converging. The side quest might be a main... Okay, I know who did the sleep powder now. This is freaking scary Pokemon, you know. Here they are. Okay, there's one of them. It's this way. There it is. Eek, go away. Hey, calm down. We're not here for your nectar. Oh, really? Sorry. I thought you are here to steal the nectar. I gathered too. Us too? Was there someone else? That's right. A Pokemon keeps coming to steal my nectar. That's why I hid here. Oh, there you are. Oh, look, it's back. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Pikachu Cloud, thank you so much. Both cute if I came home safely. And I thought you were important to the scene. How could it be a Pokemon that was never here before? Does it have to be so giant, man? It's a Venonat. No mistake in those massive eyes. Apparently, they can even see in the dark. So sparkly. Yes, yes. What is it? Yes. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? Okay, so... I'm really busy, but yes, yes. About sleep powder. Hmm. Is this your sleep powder? Nope, definitely not mine. No siree. How can you tell? I use my sleep powder to catch per I would rather die than get eaten by a venom. It doesn't smell this soothing or beautiful. Nope, nope, not one bit. I see. I do believe this is Lilligan's fragrance. Oh, yes. Yeah, and where would we find Lilligan? I would check one of the nearby hedges, probably. No, definitely, yes. To the greenery. The nearby hedges. Hey! Look, it's Barnyard. Wanna talk? Hi. State thy business! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking like that? Make that queries known. <laughs> I don't have anything to ask you really, but about the Ponyard. What brings thou here? My training is yet unfinished. I've selected this locale to further hone my blades. Oh, no wonder you look so strong. I still have much to learn. So you don't remember going inside the mansion. The mansion, you say. Mayhap I ventured inside that opulent domicile, but I have no recollection of doing so. Hey, come on, you gotta remember. Hmm. The wind may have blown me in whilst I was in the company of my whimsical companions. I beg pardon if mine actions have caused disturbance. <laughs> you didn't do anything on purpose, so I'm sure Sanjeev will forgive you. Thou hast my gratitude. Bro, Ponyard is... <laughs> Ponyard is amazing. What? Lilligant? It's Lilligan. This Pokemon is known for having an aroma that calms the heart and mind. So that's what that nice smell was. You think I smell nice? You're sweet. You mind if we ask you some questions? Your timing is actually perfect. I was actually taking a break from dancing. Okay, about your sleep powder. Is this your sleep powder? Yes, I recognize the fragrance. Do you remember giving this to anyone? No. You see, my sleep powder just puffs out naturally whenever I dance. Though thinking on it now, there is a human who came to watch me dance recently. Do you remember what they look like? I'm afraid not. I was in the zone. Hmm, that's rough! <laughs> You're so stupid. Hey, it's something. Thanks for your help, Lilligant. 
So someone came here and was watching Lilligant maybe even like a few days ago to get the sleep powder. I see. So you're not sure who the culprit is still. Right. But we did learn something important. And what's that? Think about it, Tim. The sleep powder scent trail led us directly from the mansion to the terrace. Do you think that's normal? That's the path they carried the sleep powder in. Okay. Which makes it even more likely that it was an inside job. Let's ask around. It wasn't you, clearly. And we know who did it. This is the smoking pistol. I don't need to interview anyone else. It used to be one of Barnes's duties. But the task has fallen to Turner since he joined the staff. This is why she hired him. Wow. I, you know, I actually... I gave you a fair shot, wife. I almost thought you couldn't have done it. I don't need any more interviews. I know what happened. I don't know anything about Gralith's food. I was just you talk to Turner about that. Did you happen to see Gralith eating her food today? No, I didn't. I'm not in the habit of watching her eat. The Pokemon of the house eat in a separate room from us humans. Oh, if they ate in the same room as us, their fur, feathers, or what you have could get in our food. So they eat in a different room, at my request, of course. A policy like that's not going to make you very popular with Pokemon, lady. Okay, Turner. Larry Turner. Yes, of course. Ask me anything about Gralith's food. Let's see if he gets nervous. Mr. Dennis is really picky about the ingredients I can use for Growlithe's food. He tells me what to put in it and I make the food to his exact specifications. He doesn't sound nervous. Did someone sprinkle it in after? Sounds like Mr. Dennis really cares about Growlithe's health. Yes, he truly cares about Pokemon. A good egg that one. Dennis seems like quite the guy. What's healthy and what's tasty don't always match up though. Oh my god, he wasn't nervous. Who else could have prepared the food? Yes. Okay, let's talk to Butler. Yes. I know exactly what kind of food Growlithe prefers. She's particularly fond of sweets. When I was in charge of her meals, I made a point of preparing sweet desserts for her. You're a good guy, Barnes. You could learn a thing or two from this guy, too. Give me more sweets. His Pikachu already seems to be acting strangely. Don't worry, this is normal for him. Turner is the one who used the sleep powder. But that's just conjecture. We don't have any hard evidence. How could we find proof? We'd have to find- We have to search his room! He has a box of- He has a jar of sleep powder probably. It's kind of aggressive move, but we could try shaking him up a bit. <laughs> Let's see if we can make Tur Turner nervous. Hey, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, he played it quite well. Yes. Oh, hello, Tim. How's the investigation going? We're actually a bit stuck at the moment. Sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do to help? I was actually hoping to ask you more questions. By all means, ask away. Okay. He would know about these Pokemon. Let's start with the Cramorant. Excuse me. You've got a partner Cramorant, right, Mr. Turner? What? How do you know that? It came up while we were gathering statements in the city. Hmm. I see. I hope you don't think I was hiding that fact or anything. I was just afraid he might become a suspect. I did tell the police, of course. Really? It's been a while since I've seen him, actually. Worryingly so. Where could he have gone? Are you lying? You told them to hide somewhere, didn't you? Oh, we just saw Cramorant walking back towards the mansion. Why that little- I TOLD HIM TO STAY PUT! <laughs> hmm, stay put? Why did you tell him that, Mr. Turner? Or, or I just didn't want him going out on his own. I've been so worried that he might have gotten mixed up in the crime somehow. Thank you so much for finding him, Tim. It's such a huge relief. Okay. Mm -hmm. About the poniard. We were, were thinking a poniard may have cut the jewel case. Really? I mean, yes. I think you've cracked it. So it was a poniard that punched you, Mr. Turner? Yes, it most certainly was. It really hurts. In fact, it still hurts. So maybe he faked getting punched. I mean, he's walking around. I don't see no injury. Okay, guys. So we know where the jewel is, right? It has to be in the Cramorant's belly. Hey, Cramorant. You're so slow. Look, Pikachu, it's Cramorant. Weren't you going to go back to Turner? Didn't make it very far, did you? Cramorant. You've been resting because you feel too full to walk. What a giant crime, dude. Everyone, thank you for coming. This sudden conference had better be important. Shut your face. It is. We've identified the real culprit. <gasps> Have you now? <laughs> what the <laughs> yes, Mr. Barnes isn't the one who stole the jewel. Oh, oh, I had no idea. 
Who did it then? Let's start with how the culprit entered the jewel storage room. Okay. There were no signs of forced entry on the door, so the culprit must have used the key. But Growlithe was guarding the key. No one but my husband or Barnes could have taken the key from Growlithe. The culprit used sleep powder to make Growlithe fall asleep. And after that, they took the key. Do you have evidence of that? Take a close look at Growlithe's food bowl, Inspector. You'll find traces of Lilligan's sleep powder in it. Of course. So that's how the culprit got into the jewel storage room. He's so freaking scared. But they couldn't possibly have cut open that sturdy display case in such a short time. No. They could have if they had Pokemon accomplices. The culprit somehow used Whimsicott and Ponyard. And got Ponyard to cut open the case. What? How is that even possible? But that doesn't necessarily prove that Barnes is innocent. Actually, I do have proof that Mr. Barnes is innocent. We discovered this note in a Trubbish's possession. Uh, a note? The culprit jotted down their whole plan. They wanted to frame Mr. Barnes for the crime. So who's the real culprit? You'll never show this man! He's so scary looking! The real culprit is right here with us! You know, I, I, I know it's not her, but I, I have to point the finger. Fine! No, that's not right. I, I was just trying, man. Mr. Turner, you're the culprit. But, but, but I'm a victim of this crime. Ponyard punched me. It punched you, huh? Ponyard has blades for hands, and I don't see any cuts on you. If you really think I'm the culprit, then where's the jewel? I don't have it on me, and I haven't set foot outside the mansion. Of course you don't have the stolen jewel. You hid it. In Cramorant's belly. Uh, excuse me? Cramorant's maybe Turner's partner, but even so... Where is that Cramorant anyway? Mr. Turner, you clearly put a lot of thought into your plan. But when we investigated the crime scene, we found a Cramorant feather. And you underestimated Growlithe's sense of responsibility. Cramorant. All right, let me handle this. What the frick is that? There it is! The Aurora Drop! And the key to the storage room, too! I'm afraid you can't talk your way out of this, Mr. Turner. <sighs> I was so close to living the easy life. I shouldn't have teamed up with someone I barely knew. Hmm. Which is who? I'm sure Holiday will look into his accomplice. Right, let's leave that to the police. Was I wrong this whole time? For us here, the roar drop was a symbol of hope. I thought it could bring hope to even more people. That's why I decided to donate it. But I never thought it would lead to an incident like this. Maybe I should just forget about donating it and keep it locked quietly in the house. Goodness gracious, you of all people. Do you really think so little of the Aurora Drop? What are you saying, Claudia? Didn't you tell me yourself that you hoped whoever looked at the Aurora Drop would not only see its beauty, but also feel cheered up and encouraged by it? Are you really going to give up on that hope just because of a stroke of bad luck? Wouldn't that be a terrible waste? Don't you agree, Barnes? Indeed, ma'am, it's just as you say. Mr. Dennis, your plan to donate the jewel to the people of Rhyme City was most certainly not a mistake. Please believe in yourself and do what you think is best. Claudia Barnes, forgive me. I think I let myself get too shaken by what happened today. I believe in the beauty of the Aurora Drop and the people of Rhyme City, as you should. But Claudia, weren't you against the donation? Don't misunderstand me. I just don't want to deal with you moping around like this for the rest of your life. That's all. <laughs> I see. Thank you, Claudia. This incident has forced me to reconsider, shall we say, some of my views. Clefable, Duck, Le Growlithe. Let's all eat together from now on. Hello? <laughs> That's a crazy epilogue. Ironic, huh? Cramorant swallowed the jewel. And now you've got to swallow the bitter consequences. How's that ironic? Well, let's go. Yeah. Look at her casually hold it. Cramorant! Are you alright? 
Stand there. Hurry up and grab it. Right. <laughs> How could this be happening? <laughs> Turner! Hold on. I swear I had nothing to do with that. Why don't we discuss this down at the station? That Cramor didn't have that on its back when we first found it in the dumpster area, did it? That's R. It must be some R-related crap. Have they, like, developed R further to control Pokemon? Growlithe, you did a great job. <coughs> hey, Pikachu. Look. Win -win. Oh. Are you leaving already? See you around. They're going wherever the wind takes them. Say, Tim, did you notice Cramorant's back? Yeah, there was something glowing on it. I've never seen anything like it. I wonder, maybe Turner didn't know what was going on. Oh, baby. I'm home. Tim's back! Well, you sure are home late. And I brought a Good girlfriend. Evening. Oh, and who is this? My classmate, Rachel. It's nice to meet you. Is she your girlfriend? Huh? If only. Actually, Rachel's here because... Hello, sorry to barge in so suddenly. I was hoping to get some advice from the great detective here. I didn't realize his family was, uh, was visiting though. Welcome, Rachel. Look at my photo. We didn't mean to startle you. Sophie and I just arrived in Rhyme City yesterday. We came to see Brothers Awards Ceremony. Oh, really? Now, this is probably the first time you've all seen each other in a while. I really hope I'm not in the way. Please, don't worry about it. We'll be in town for a while yet. Make yourself at home. Alright, my dudes. I'ma call it quits here. Make sure I'll shank that like button. These episodes are so long, you know. I'm so drained by the end of it. But, you know, 4K likes... We'll keep uploading this. But yeah, I feel like this game will end Detective Pikachu. So we'll have all the mystery solved by the end of this. Which is pretty cool to think about. Anyhow, hopefully y'all are enjoying it. I'll see y'all in another video. Take care.